Ezekiel 28. Let's read to read what we read. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. And Tyrus has been the subject of the last three chapters. We saw Tyrus likened to the United Nations and Mystery Babylon. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a big G God. Now we're going to find out we're not just talking to the Prince of Tyrus here. I am a God. Not the God. But boy, he takes on that big G. Remember the tribulation period. I sit in the seat of big G God. You know someone who's going to sit in God's seat one day? You know somebody who proclaims to be the, the victor of Christ and supposedly sits in Peter's chair? In the midst of the seas. Now that's where Tyre is going to end up, an island. Not yet. Yet thou art a man. Remember what it says about the mark of the beast and what his number is? It's a number of, I think it says, a man. And not big G, God. Though thou set thy heart as the heart of big G, God. So someone here thinks they're God. They have a heart. And their heart believes they are God. But we're talking to the prince of Tyre. We're going to see in a minute we're not talking to the prince. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Wisdom. He knows more than Daniel. Daniel? When does Daniel come into the picture? He's the next character we're going to study. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Well, you can hide a secret from a prince, a man. With thy wisdom and thy understanding, there is no knowledge. This person does not know. Thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasure. And we read about that in chapter 27. But remember Mystery Babylon, all the stuff she had? Who is the ruler of that nation? Who is the ruler of the United Nations? By thy great wisdom, and by thy traffic, as thou increase thy riches, thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. So money has made him worse. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God. That's an interesting statement. My heart is God's heart. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, people you don't know, the terrible of nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, war. So this creature is beautiful. He devours in beauty. They should defile thy brightness. I beheld Satan as lightning fall. And they shall bring thee down to the pit. 
and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, big G? Someone's going to slay you. Who do you think you are to be called God? Jesus was not killed. He gave his life. You couldn't kill Jesus. He's God. The Bible records he gave up the ghost. No one took it. But thou shalt be a man. Have you studied Revelation? Thessalonians? Judas? The man of sin? Have you studied that? And no big G. Listen, he's not calling himself uh, Pegasus. He's not calling himself Asterisk. He's not calling himself Minor God. He is calling himself God. I made the heavens and earth with the Big Bang. I am God. Women say today, you have no right over my body. It's my body. That's where, where do you think they got that from? God or Satan? And what did they do with that? They killed innocent life. What's John 8, 44 say? He's a liar and he's a murderer. But we'll get to about being Satan in a minute. In the hand of him that slayeth thee. You can't be God if someone can kill you. Doesn't the Antichrist take a, a mortally deadly wound? Thou shalt die the death of the uncircumcised Gentiles by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. When we're talking about Satan here, let, let's get down to the fact let's, we can stop right here and close the book. God will get victory over Satan. We can close the book now. God wins. And we're not in Revelation. We're in the middle of Ezekiel 28, and it says God is going to win. How's that? Oh, we worship Satan. Satan rules. No, he doesn't. Not for long. You people better read the end of the book. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So we're not done. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre. And I think we read that in 27. Now, it was dressed to the prince, verse 2. Now we're going to the king. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Inspiration. Thou sealest up the sum. That's, that's the, the addition. The number. From adding. Full of wisdom. This person we're talking about, 28, has all the wisdom you do not have. Even a man of God such as Daniel. This person is smarter in wisdom. And perfect in beauty. There's that beauty again. So when you get these magazines and you get this, this makeup and mascara and beauty queens and Miss Universe, Miss this, Miss that, beauty pageant, what do you think that's of? That is of the being, which we haven't even mentioned. I've told you who it is, but we haven't got to it. This is of the being, the, the being of chapter 28. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Read the end of Proverbs 31 about the virtuous woman. Listen, you can fall in love with the most beautiful woman in the world. One day, Lord Terry, she's going to get old, wrinkled, and uh, sagging. And you know what's interesting? If you were to have the most beautiful woman in the world, other guys are going to be panting after her. And she may be the most beautiful woman in the world. Does she know how to make an egg? 
Does she know how to make Kool-Aid? Does she need a cookbook on how to boil water? A lot of girls are coming out of high school today. They don't even know how to cook. But let's get beauty and wisdom. So this person you really could never draw a picture of. How do you draw somebody so beautiful? You take, if you were to take one of these magazines you see at the checkout and say, I want you to go back as far as you've been a magazine when you established yourself. I want you to find the most prettiest, beautifulest person ever. And I want you to put them on your cover this month. This person will outdo their beauty. Let's read on. Thou hast been in Edom, okay, Edom, the Garden of God. When was the Prince of Tyre there? When was the King of Tyre there? As far as I read in the Bible, there was a man called Adam. There was a woman called Eve. There was a person called God. It was a bunch of animals and a serpent. According to Revelation 12, that was Satan, the old serpent, the devil. Do you know why Eve had a nice conversation with the serpent? Because he was beautiful. That's what the Bible says. You know, the, the, the result of the serpent not having no feet and is the result after the curse, Genesis 3. So this being was in the garden of God, Eden. So read Genesis 1, 2, and 3. It can't be this man of Tyre. There was no Tyre. So everything we've been reading about, yes, it's a prince and it's a king. Didn't Satan say to Jesus Christ, if thou will worship me, I will give you all these? You know what the prince of Tyre did? You know what the king of Tyre did? He fell down before Satan and said, yes, I'll take it, and you are my God. Jesus is walking down the street one day, and he's... He's talking to his disciples, and Peter speaks up. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, Peter was not Satan, but Jesus Christ, who is God, addressed Satan through a man. Scripture was Scripture. Now, you ever hear of devil possession? Demon, they'll say. You don't want this devil to be part of your life where God speaks to this person in the name of Satan. You're in bad condition. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the woman's best friend, uh, the diamond, the barrel. The onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald city, the carbuncle, and gold. He's a walking jewelry store. Do you know where you find the two illustrations of this creature here? You find him on the breastplate of the high priest. And you find him in the walls of New Jerusalem. Do you know how beautiful Satan was? He was beauty of the high priest's chest plate. He was the beauty as the walls of New Jerusalem. You know how colorful he was? Let me get it. Let me get it. You would put light to him. He would almost look like a rainbow. Prism. He's all different kinds of colors. So when you worship the rainbow of the world today, you are worshiping 
Lucifer, Satan, because my rainbow, God said, I will put in the sky to remind the covenant I made with Noah and the animals, not because of sexual perversion. Your sexual perversion rainbow follows after the beauty. Isn't sex and all that about beauty? I just, just admire what you look like, that I want your body, whether you're the same sex or not. The workmanship, we'll come back to that word maybe in a minute, of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. All right, first of all, this being was never eternal. He had a date that he was created. Who creates things? God. So who is the workmanship? God. God made this guy a one-man band. And where is the number one thing where church go wrong and fail? The music department. You gotta watch your music director. You gotta watch what songs you sing. You gotta watch every little note because that's Satan's domain. He was the most beautiful, we're gonna read in a minute, cherubim. He was the most musician, musician. I write the songs that, you gotta listen to that song. I think it's Barry Manilow. When you listen to the words, I write the songs, that song is about Lucifer. Read it. Listen to it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, go get that secular music and listen to the words as it's being sung to you. It's about Lucifer. I was in the beginning. I was in the... Read the words. Get the lyrics. Whoever wrote that song was written by Satan to this guy to get money, whoever it was. God made him beautiful. God made him all. Verse 13. Ready? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. There were five cherubims. We read about four in Ezekiel. We read about four in Revelation. One. Here he is. One. We haven't seen this guy show up with the cherubims. What is he? He's the dragon. He's the serpent. He's the snake. He's the reptile. We don't see that in Ezekiel 1. We don't see that in Revelation 4. He is a cherub that has fallen. Here he is. He's got musical instruments on him. He's got gold, silver, and all the stones that covereth his position in heaven sat above God. He led the choir in heaven. You know, since he's fallen, there is no singing in heaven. You don't find singing in heaven to when they say we sang the song of Moses in Revelation. Oh, the angel sang is the birth of Jesus. You better go back and read that again. It said they said peace on earth. They didn't sing it. And I, God, have set thee so. I put you there. I think we're going to finish with this guy, and we're not going to finish this chapter. We're going to leave. Thou, this is the cherub, Satan, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Yeah. What's heaven? Heaven's a mountain. How do you know that? Where do all these religions go when they have their, uh, I can't even name it now, their travelings, they go pilgrimage. Don't they go to a mountain? Isn't that big guru after you climb this big mountain and there he is, he sits in his cave to give you all the answers? Where do you think Satan got that one from? Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I have no idea what that is, but stone, fire walkers, 
are satanic. When you see National Geographic, here's these guys, they walk across poles of fire. They are imitating Satan. You see a guy who, oh, I can pick up a live coal out of the grill and all that. That's satanic. Because that's what Satan did. Again, read back to Edom. Who was in Edom? Who are we talking about? Thou wast perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created, never eternal, God made Satan. Till iniquity was found in thee. That's when Satan fell. Did God make Satan fall? No. What made Satan fall? Jeopardy, Jeopardy question number 400, the, the multi-billion dollar question that here is, what made Satan fall? What's every man fall for? Beauty and wisdom. I can hang it up on the wall, a piece of paper, and I can brag about I, I made it with that woman. Now I'll do it with music and I'll do it with diamonds. Look at who Satan was. Look what he gave up. And do you know where he's going? The lake of fire. By the multitude of thy merchandise. So we are stepping far in Tyre, but we're still talking about Tyre. We talked about last night in the United Nations. We're talking about Babylon. And what does God say about this person who was Edom? You've got merchandise. Satan has the goods. That's what it says. They filled the midst of thee with violence. Where does violence come from? Satan. And thou hast sinned. There you go. Satan sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Is he cast out today? Have you studied Job 1 and 2? Have you studied Revelation? Satan is there in heaven today. Walks right up to God and says, God, you see that Christian down there? You see what he done? The accuser of the brethren he is called. Now I will destroy thee. You need to need to read Revelation 12. By the way, we'll be in glory in Revelation 12 when Satan's kicked out. And the Bible says once that happens, we're going to have a hallelujah party. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. What was he covered with? All these musical instruments, diamonds and all. Do you read about wings? It looks like he was different from the other cherubim. The other cherubim had wings. This one had stones and musical instruments. From the mist of the stones of fire, I have no idea. Thy heart, he has a heart. Have you read the study of the Leviathans of the Bible? How his scales are so tight together? As we read Isaiah 14, 12 to 20 here, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty.
So how many children's stories are about a beauty and a beast? Someone with a mirror. Someone with beautiful long hair. If you would take all the magazines that have to deal with any sort of beauty and threw them out today, how many magazines would you have left? Thou has corrupted, made bad, thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I've seen Satan fall as lightning. He's got ministers of light. The light at the end of the tunnel. He's got an imitation light. But it's not called light. It's called brightness. Christ is called the light. I, God, will cast thee to the ground. You gotta make them ground. That's Revelation chapter 12. And you know what it says about that? Woe be to you that are on the earth. For Satan knows he had but a, uh, I'm not quoting quite, but he knows he has but a, a few, whatever it is, time. He, his time's running out quick. He knows it. Can you imagine how anger Satan will be when he's actually thrown out of heaven at that point and that's it he knows his time's coming and the Bible speaks to the earth woe be to you woe be to the Jews and he sucks up that that Jordan River and tries to drown them all out like Noah I will lay thee before king get the s in that one about this kings in the tribulation that they may behold thee. Looking down at a man who's been killed. Looking at a man who's been in hell. The lake of fire. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries. So he's got sanctuaries. By the multitude of thy iniquity. He has defiled his own place. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, Job 41, 19 and 20, 26. You know, the fire-breathing dragon. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all them that behold thee. Now we're back to the city. But it's also Satan. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror. There's your terrorism. That's the result of terrorism right there. And never shalt thou be any more. Verse 10 said, Thou shalt die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. In verse 19, And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. There is an end coming to Satan. Satan has an end. God is going to take care of the enemy. But we see the enemy who he is. He was in chapter 26. He was chapter 27. He is in chapter 28. He is in the United Nations. He is in Mystery Babylon. He's called a man. He's called beautiful. He has great wisdom. 
He's interested in music. He has been where no man has gone before. How's that one? Where does that movie in the, or that television series take place? Where they, they go, boldly go where no man's gone before. Where does that take place? It takes place in outer space. And according to the Bible, that's his domain now. Principalities and powers in the, in the heaven. He was in Edom, and that takes out the, anybody from Tyre. He's a cherub. That takes out the king and prince of Tyre. They're not cherubim. We have been reading cherubims in the Bible, and now we find out that there was a missing cherubim. And according to Revelation 12, it's a dragon, a, a, a serpent, reptile. So when Jesus told his disciples, come with me, I'll make you fishers of men. And if you are like your father, the devil, in John 8, 44, you are a fish. You are a reptile of Satan. And Jesus says, let's go cast our line in, grab the fish, and let's make them new creatures, right? Going all the world and preach the gospel to, to all creatures? You're not even classified as man before you're saved. Because you have a wrong birth. You need a new birth. And we read about Satan. And who he is and what he was and what he is. 